So the theme for today and what we're talking about was submitted by somebody over on Instagram. That is, what do you do with the color orange? So the color orange, it, you know, it can be kind of difficult to shoot. And I've found that when you're dealing with kind of a solid color or a single color, there are a couple things you can do. And we're gonna go through a couple shots that are gonna talk about that. And you can see here, I've got some sweet potato tots that I just put in the oven. I don't know if you can see them without falling over. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do a simple kind of group overhead shot, just playing with our lighting and kind of see what we're gonna do. And before we really get into that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about lighting. Now, you'll notice it's like 9.15 at night, and you can see outside, it's completely dark outside. And for many of you, I know that may be a situation you find yourselves in of, you know, I love shooting with natural light, but my kids are finally asleep at night, or just stuff happens and it's dark when I'm shooting. Or even worse, you start doing a shoot and the sun goes down and it becomes dark and that beautiful natural light you had is gone. What do you have to do? You have to know how to shoot with an artificial light source. So, so if you can see on the screen, we've got the sweet potatoes and we've got this nice soft light going over them. And you'll notice that they've got kind of like this dark shadows a little bit. And that's because I don't have a fill card over here. If I had a fill card, it would kind of reflect back in. But in this case, I don't really want that because I do like seeing the shape and the texture. And when you're dealing with one color, like this solid orange, showing that shape and that texture is really what's gonna take your picture from just you know, kind of flat and boring to a little more visually interesting. Now again, from a propping standpoint, this is about as easy as we can get. You know, it's just sweet, potato sweet potatoes on parchment paper. And I decided to put white parchment on the sheet pan because I didn't really want that dark, heavy look. I wanted to keep it a little lighter because generally sweet potatoes are thought, you know, more of a kind of have health benefits. So that white, it's kind of a stretch a little bit, but that white lighter color, I'm kind of going with more maybe the health, healthy route. Again, it's a sweet potato tot. So, you know, it's maybe not as healthy as a baked sweet potato, but still delicious. And at the end, we're going to kind of dunk it in this icing. So we're going to take all the health out of it, but it's going to be really good. So we've kind of got our shot here. Now we're going to shoot another one and I'll show it to you on the screen. That last one, I was kind of at like this three quarter angles and I more want to go from an overhead standpoint, something like this. And I'm shooting with a macro lens. This is a hundred millimeter macro. This is my absolute favorite lens for food photography. And this is the Canon 5D Mark II, so it's a full frame camera. So that means it's gonna be 100 millimeters. But if you've got a, one of the crop sensors, say like the 7D, the 80D, then I'd probably recommend the 60 millimeter macro because it's gonna bring you back to that kind of 100 millimeter length. So let's shoot another kind of overhead one. I was getting a little too much light over here, so I wanna kind of move the sweet potatoes around a little bit and have some turning up, some turning down, so they're not all go in the same direction, kind of that like, oh, this accidentally looks amazing when I pulled it out of the oven, but you really spend like 10 minutes moving things around till you find what looks the way you want to. So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna take one more. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna show you. And I think this is the shot that I'm gonna stick with for this kind of just overhead shot of the sweet potatoes. Here we go. You can see I'm shooting at 1 200th of a second, F8, and we can see the sweet potatoes. I see the shape, they look nice. They've got you know, the nice color of that orange, and I can see the shadows in there, which I really like. So we're gonna move on to another shot now. We're gonna take these sweet potatoes, and we're going to style them and put them in a container. And the theme that I'm going for is something kind of like outdoor, picnic, tailgating, you know, a little more relaxed. So I'm going with this lovely blue and white checker tablecloth here. And I'm gonna use baskets, these kind of plastic baskets that I'm going to put some kind of wax paper in. And you know, with this being live TV, of course I forgot to get my wax paper out. So I'm gonna walk out of frame here for just one second. and get this wax paper that I'm gonna to use to line the inside of my container, something like this. And I like going kind of one way and then kind of turning it and going another. And I'm probably gonna probably use three or four sheets here, kind of build it up a little. 
I'm going to go around the edges just a little bit. So it's something kind of like this. And then I'm going to take my sweet potatoes and I'm going to put them in the pan. And the weight of the sweet potatoes is going to help kind of shape that container a little bit. So I will continue to kind of mess with it once I get them all in there. Kind of like this. Something like that. So we've got our sweet potatoes in our basket. And I really like what we've got going here with kind of the white of the paper and the blue and white checkered. Now, when you're shooting a solid color and you want to kind of have some more interest to make it stand out, you can always choose a complementary color on the color wheel. And orange and blue are complementary to one another, so the blue is going to look nice and the orange is just going to pop on top of that. So here we go, put this like that. I'm just kind of arranging them, so I don't want really any big gaps. Just want to kind of even things out a little bit like that. And again, I'm going to take a picture and you're going to see on the screen what we're doing because I know it's kind of difficult from the angle where we are now. So I'm going to keep the lighting set, set up the same and I'm going to have it here. I'm going to take a couple different shots. I'm actually going to switch lenses after I do a couple macro shots to get a little wider. So I'm going to start with the macro, so we're a little close up, and then we'll go wider with a 17 to 40 lens. So here we go. Okay, so that's way too close in, but you get the idea with a macro. So I'm going to unhook here so I can move around a little more. And you know, I, looking at this more, I think I'm actually going to start with the 17 to 40 because I don't think I'm going to get it as wide as I would like to. So I'm going to switch lenses. And put on the 17 to 40. Now, I get asked a lot of times what lenses do I think are great for food photography. And, I mean, the macro is amazing. I love that. But you want to kind of have a range. You want to be able to have a range of maybe say 16 to 30, somewhere in there. That's going to give you a wider shot for those large foodscapes you have, or if you want to show the background. And then you want to have something kind of in the 50 range, 50 to 60-ish, somewhere around there. And then I like to have my close-up macro. But if you're going to have one lens to start, the 24 to 70 is great, or really the 18 to 55 or 18 to 135 kit lens is actually a great lens as well. So, you know, when you get your camera, don't get kind of hung up on like what lens you're starting with. You know, this is an expensive piece of glass. It's like a thousand dollars. So I would not recommend diving into that first thing. But What's probably more important than the lens is actually the lighting that you're using because you can have this amazing lens, but you know, if you're shooting at night with just kind of the kitchen lights overhead, you're really not going to do the lens justice. It's not going to look as nice as you would like it to. So I would definitely focus on the lighting before the lens. All right, here we go. Let's go with a little wider shot. Okay, this is more what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, so a little here, okay. All right. Okay, one more. Now, I usually do not talk while I'm taking pictures of food, so this is a challenge. So I'm gonna try and keep it a little more entertaining than just me standing here and looking at my food. And believe it or not, that's actually kind of why I got into food photography. When I was in photo school and we'd have to like practice and work on stuff, like I kind of shied away from shooting people because A, it was really hard to find models and B, I didn't really know what to say to somebody while I was taking their picture. But with food, you know, I don't really have to talk to it. I can just move it, do whatever I need to. So you can see it's an overhead shot, F9. Now, I liked having that contrast in the dark shadows with the shot on the pan, but I'm not loving it as much with this. So. What I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to fill back in these shadows. And to do that, I'm going to use an incredibly expensive piece of equipment. So expensive that, okay, I'm trying to make a joke and that's not funny, but really I'm just using a piece of foam board. It's like maybe $3 at um, you know, the grocery store, the drug store, wherever you want to be. And I found this is an amazing reflector. It's not very expensive. If you get it messy, it doesn't really matter. And you know, it's going to do a great job reflecting that light back in there. And a trick I like to use to have it hold and stand up is at your hardware store, these are 
roofing brackets. It's an L shape. And then you get something called an A clamp. And what you do is you take your A clamp, take your L bracket, and just go like that. And look at that. It stands on its own. So now we've got this reflector that is going to fill light back into those shadows. So I'm going to take the picture again, and you're going to see a difference. Let's look at it one more time just so you can see the um, shadows in there. Okay, so you see how we've got the lighter side, which is this side where the light's coming from, and then we have the darker side, and that's where the shadows are. Because remember, your shadows are always going to be on the opposite side of where your light source is coming from. So let's take a picture with these filled back in. You guys, if you have any questions at all while you're watching this, please just leave them in the comments, and I'll do a kind of Q&A at the end when I can actually look at my phone. So, because the downside of Facebook Live is I'm using my phone to broadcast right now, so I can't really see what your questions are. But I will find a solution for that in uh, later episodes. Okay. So here we have our shot with that reflector a foam board to fill in our shadows. And you're going to see a pretty big difference. And you can now see those shadows, that dark area, you know, that was kind of on the side is now filled in. So this overhead shot's nice, but I think I want to go with a different composition. I think I want to kind of crop in part of it so we have a little more interest going on. And the sweep titers are a little more kind of in the focus of the shot. So we're going to zoom in to about 40 or so. And I'm going to intentionally cut off part of the basket. Now, a lot of the cropping decisions you'll make are going to come how you're going to use the image you know, in its final source. For instance, if you're shooting something that you know is going to be a square on Instagram, make sure that you have that square area that you can choose out of the image while you're shooting. Okay, I'm going to move this back just a little because I want a little more darkness in the shadows. Now, it's not going to be as dark as with it not there, but if you move it a little further back, it's not going to reflect as much light in. Okay, I'm liking that there. And I'm going to arrange my sweet potatoes a little bit because I'm seeing kind of a hole that I don't like. All right, now let's go with something like this. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do one composition, which I'm going to show you right now, and I'm leaving room for kind of copy down at the bottom, because I think I may want to write something on this image, or have room to um, you know, add in a graphic or something like that. So I'm going to show you what this looks like now. And one second, there we go. Okay, so you can see how on the bottom I've got room where I could add copy if I wanted to. And you'll notice how instead of just being overhead and just having a lot of tablecloth, we've cut off the basket a little bit. So let's do one more here. All right. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, I think this is going to be my final shot of these sweet potatoes, and I will show you it here. And we're going to do one more shoot here during this first episode of Photographing Food Live. Okay, there we go. So you can see how I you know, brought the whole cropping and composition kind of tighter in. And I think this is the final one that I'm going to use. And this last shot that I've got in my head is I'm going to use a tripod for it because you've noticed before I'm not using a tripod. And you know, I'm sure you probably heard, oh, you know, you know, you definitely need to use a tripod to make sure you have sharp photos. Okay, yes, that is true to a point, but I'm shooting at one two hundredth of a second, and that's a pretty fast shutter speed. So I'm confident that I can handhold it and get a sharp image. And when you're using something like flash, you're able to shoot at those fast shutter speeds like that. So for this shot, though, I'm going to bring out the tripod because what I want to do is I want to get a shot of the sweet potato being kind of dipped in this icing and pulled back out. So I'm going to get an idea of where my focus needs to be, set that, and then I'm going to do the shot. So this would be kind of difficult to do hand holding, especially since I need to have one hand free to dip the sweet potato. So I'm going to put it on a tripod, and I'm going to switch back over to the macro lens for that. Over here. 
and then I'm going to put it on a tripod. And if you don't have a quick release plate for your camera and tripod, I suggest you get one because it's really handy to be able to just kind of clip on and there I'm in the tripod like that. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. And so for the shot, what I want is I'm gonna have in the foreground, I'm gonna have this icing with kind of a sweet piece of sweet potato, like going in and dipping like that. And then in the background, I kind of want to see out of focus this pot of sweet potato, uh, tater tots. So I'm gonna put that back there. And we're gonna put this kind of right here. And I'm gonna line everything first up kind of without the sweet potato in it, but I'm gonna have in my head what I want it to look like and kind of know the spacing where it needs to be. So I'm gonna do something like this, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm liking that. Uh, maybe a little more room. And again, I'll show you in a second here so you can see what I'm talking about. Now I'm manually focusing for this. So I'm gonna turn off my autofocus because if I accidentally you know, hit the focus button and it's on autofocus, it's gonna ruin that manual focus that I had. And with this glass bowl, I can focus kind of on the front of it, but that's not where my subject's gonna be. My subject's gonna be kind of in the middle. So I'm actually gonna hold one in the middle and then draw my focus to get an idea of where it needs to be. Okay. There we go, something like that. Okay. So let's take a picture here so we can see what we've got going on. Okay, so you can see I've got that dish in the front, the sweet potatoes in the back like I was talking about. Now, I do want, I saw a little shadow action going on in the front of the bowl, so what I want to do is bring this a little closer in here into the front. Something like that. Okay. There we go. And I'm actually kind of worried about this tip thing, so I'm going to flip this around. So we got like that. We'll put this down on the ground. Oops. Sorry, flip it around. There we go. So I'm having trouble right here. Um, oh. Here we go. I'll just put one on the other end. And when you put two like this, then it's going to stand up on its uh, like that, there we go. Okay, perfect. So this is standing up straight. And, okay, let's do this one more time. I'm not gonna show you here, I'm just gonna make sure it's right on the camera and I'll show you kind of the final, oh, I am gonna show you, sorry, let's plug it in. Okay, so you can see how in the front of the bowl we've got a little more light in there. So let's unplug here and I'm gonna do a test shot with my sweet potato. And I'm gonna use a fork, I think, for the dipping because I don't have really nice fingernails and my, I'm not a hand bottle by any chance uh, standpoint. So we're gonna kinda go like this. And you know, that's actually not gonna work. So I think I'm gonna grab a toothpick, which is right here. Okay. So I think a toothpick is gonna work better to be able to pick up my sweet potato. I'm gonna find one I think looks nice here. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's gonna work nicely. So I'm able to hold my sweet potato and I'm gonna be able to get it to where I need to get it. So I'm gonna put it there, get the focus where I want it. Okay, I can see that my light, my hand's blocking some of the light, so I'm gonna come around to the other side and try and try this again. Mm, not quite what I'm wanting. So, I'm gonna move this. I'm kind of shift my whole set here so the light's not as much straight back lighting, it's more gonna be kind of from the side so that my hand won't be backlit. And we'll go kind of like, yeah, maybe this is now in front of my lens. And we'll kind of go like that. 
And I'm just gonna reposition everything to make it look exactly what I want. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so I need some more fill, so I'm going to bring in just a little fill card right here. I'm going to get closer in. There we go, that's getting better. Okay, so I'm going to now try this shot here, dipping into icing. Okay, this is a shot that we want to end up using, so we're going to go in, pull it out, nice, okay, I'm liking that, so I'm just going to make sure my focus is right where it needs to be, pull it down in, pull it out, something like that. Okay, here, let me show you this last one, and shall I? Okay, so you can see that I've got that nice you know, drip of the icing coming down, and I've, you know, the toothpick was definitely the way to go, because I can hold it there, and I think a fork would have gotten in the way, and when I tried to put a fork in it, they kind of fell apart. So that's what I'm wanting to go with. All right, so you know, I think that's it as far as the shots. We've gone through the sweet potatoes on the pan, and then we kind of, you know, that's kind of your general setup shot that we have of, you know, kind of just made, just in the oven, kind of preparation shot. And then we did kind of a styled in the container. Then we kind of did an action shot of them being dipped in the sauce. So I think we've got some questions here. So I'm going to, okay, I'm actually going to have uh, my wife read out the question and then I'm going to answer it. So, Sarah, if you don't mind reading out some questions here. Um, Michael wants to know what soft box you are using. Okay, great question, Michael. So, this is the newer 47 inch, I think it's Octabox. It's on Amazon. Um, I have, so, funny story, hold on one second. So, I've had this Apollo. 32 inch, sorry, 42 inch orb for about five or six years. And as you can see, it's no longer an Octabox. It's maybe like a pentagram. It's kind of falling apart. It's, you know, it's done a really good job over the last five or six years, but it was time to get something new. And, you know, that's over, it's probably like 130 bucks or so. So, you know, I was like, okay, that's a lot of money. I want to see if there's other options. So I was looking on Amazon. I saw this newer one. It's the brand is N E E W E R. So I really like it. I've not done enough to really give it a full review yet, but I am going to do a review on it later on. I really like the price point, it's around 40 bucks. So once I get that review down, I'll switch it out on my uh, gear guide on photographreview.com and I'll show you where you can get it. But um, yeah, I really, really like the large shape and it folds like an umbrella, so it's easy to carry and take places. Karen says, what are your camera settings? You said shutter speed was 200. Do you prioritize shutter or aperture and let your ISO float? Great question. Okay, so it depends on if I'm shooting in natural light or if I'm shooting with a flash. So when I'm shooting with a flash, I always go to 1 200th of a second, which is my sync speed. And what that means is that is as fast as my camera can go without my shutter starting to cut off the flash. So most cameras it's around one two well one two hundredth some it's one two fiftieth some it's one one sixtieth and you'll know if you've exceeded it if you start to see this black bar now so i always put my shutter speed first because i know it's gonna be one two hundredth and it doesn't really affect my image when you're deciding on your exposure settings aperture is the key because aperture is what's going to give you that creative control if you're going to have a nice you know blurry background in the back or if it's going to be nice and sharp so if you're going to shoot at something like you know, f2, that's going to let a lot of light in and you would want to shoot with a higher shutter speed or you want to shoot with a lower ISO. So I'll choose shutter speed with flash is dictated already, then I'll choose whatever aperture I want and then I'll adjust either the power of my flash or my ISO to kind of get everything in line. Now when I'm shooting outdoors, I'm generally shooting handheld 
And I don't really like going um, any slower than one one-hundredth of a second just because I have a tendency to shake even when I'm trying not to shake. That means I'm going to shake even more. So I like to keep it around one one-hundredth of a second. So I'll choose my aperture and then I'll do what I need to do to get to one one-hundredth or faster. And if it looks like I'm going to have to go slower than one one-hundredth, I'll make my ISO go up instead. Great question, by the way. Winter says, yay, Taylor. Oh, hey, Winter. Uh, it's going to go on. And Karen also asks, can you shoot several photos in a row with flash or just one at a time? OK, yes, you can. So, we, so here's how flash works. So inside the flash, you've got these batteries that it's going to draw power from. And you've got this little teeny like bulb that's going to emit this giant big burst of light. So it's going to charge up and then explode with that you know, huge burst of light. So it needs time to charge back up again. And the higher the power of your flash, the more energy it's going to take. So the longer it's going to take to charge back up. It's called recycle time. So if you're shooting at like one quarter power, one eighth, one sixteenth, something like that, you can shoot more in a row because it's not as much that it has to recharge out of the batteries. But if you're shooting at full power, you can do maybe one, two, and then you'll just hit a point where your flash should also have a red light and it just won't fire at all. And you have to wait like 10, 15 seconds, maybe not that much. It kind of depends on how many you've gone for it to charge back up. Any other questions, guys? Awesome. So um, thank you so much for stopping by for episode one of Photographing Food Live. I promise this is going to get a lot more fluid and a lot better, and I won't ramble as much as we get going, but you know, I've never shot live, and I'm generally someone who does not talk while I'm shooting, so this is a new experience for me. And we're going to you know, hopefully get a lot more entertaining with them too, and the themes will get better. But so for the themes of these, I would love it if you guys could either send me a DM on Instagram, Photographing Food, send me a Facebook message, send me an email, taylor at photographingfood.com, and let me know what is it that you're having trouble with, what is it that you want to know more about, and you know, I will tackle it right here. Well, to some extent, there's some recipes I'm probably not going to be able to get done in time and shoot, but I'll do my best. So just let me know what you're having trouble with, and you know, we'll tackle it here on Photographing Food Live. I've not picked a day, like ideally I would like to do these on the same day every week, but I haven't really found a day that's going to be best yet, so I'm trying out Friday. You know, next week we might try out Wednesday, not really sure. But if the best way to know when they're going to be is to make sure that you're on my email list. And if you go to photographingfood.com and sign up for my 10 tips for food photography, it'll get you on that list and you'll get an email beginning of the week or kind of when the episode's going to come out. And if you miss them, you will get the recap of those, es those episodes sent right to you. So thank you guys so much for joining me on a Friday night. And I hope you learned something. And you know I appreciate you coming by. And if you found it valuable, please tell your friends. So have a great weekend. And we'll probably see you sometime next week. Take care.